Hello. Hey, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. How are you? I'm quite well. Um, let me turn you up a bit. All right. So you have a question for Melixia. Yep. Do you want me to kind of like uh, lay out my situation right now and then? The, uh, absolutely. The yeah. Because I'll be taking notes the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so right now I'm 23 years old. I have a college degree. I'm currently working um, as an IT consultant um, at a pretty big firm. So definitely super solid in my job role right now. Um, I have student loans and then I also have like a car payment and stuff. Um, and this is for sure not the industry I really want to be in. Um, I really want to kind of break into the uh, like esports and gaming industry. I had some previous work there. Um, but it was definitely part-time and I kind of put my, myself in a position of where I'm living a pretty comfortable life with this job. Um, but due to debt and stuff like that, I can't really take a lot of the advice you have given on different careers. Um, so I did listen to the other two talks and I thought they were really cool ideas and they seemed really applicable at a different stage of my life, but not really this one. Um, I feel like I don't have the freedom to kind of test the waters out in the industry and see what I want to do exactly, um, especially working for free with the situation I'm in right now. So um, I was basically looking for just some kind of actionable items to take to kind of uh, help help me move into a different situation. Because uh, like I said, um, in a comfortable position right now, it's not like I'm super poor or anything, but like switching to a job where the income would be next to nothing is definitely not not a viable one. Okay. Um, what, um, when, when you say you don't want to be in it, what's wrong with it? Like, why don't you want to be in it? Um, it's definitely not what I'm super passionate about. And, um, if it's not something I can put my heart into, um, you know, I just, it, it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of terrible because like uh, my heart is definitely into like gaming and esports and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. kind of going in, I, I work on like a, like federal contracts. And okay. so that kind of IT work is super, super boring. And like, it's not like a, like a bad working situation at all, um, but it's definitely not something I can put my heart into. And if I can't really put my heart into my work, um, it feels kind of like, what's the point? Mm hmm Okay. Um, when you say you really want to break into esports and gaming, um, as what? Like, what would you want to do? Do you have any idea of that? Yes, yeah, so that's like the big, big question of where I definitely need help is like, what are ways where I can kind of test out different roles? Because I mean, I do have like a sort of viable path, um, but that viable path is like way, way, way down the line in a ton of different years. Because um, I've done a lot of like administrative and like operational kind of things before. And my current role, I do a lot of operational stuff. So like a path to become a project manager and work for like a gaming company as a project manager is a viable one, but it's one that's like 10 years down the road. Why would you say that? Uh, I mean, all the different project management roles I've seen out there and definitely on different job websites have always said like, one, you need um, uh, experience in the industry for more than two years at the very minimum. And then working as a project manager, they'd like to see like, like plus three years of experience and to get like experience as a project manager, in my current role, I do need to be there for quite, quite some time. Okay. Um, did you say 23 or 28? Uh, 23. Okay. Um, do you have any other skills that would be relevant to the field? Uh, yeah, so I did a bit of community management, um, and then a lot of like super basic roles, just like, um, tournament organizer, um, managing social medias. Um, my, my, my extent of, of work in the esports industry has basically been through, uh, a pretty large, uh, collegiate club. Okay. Um, so, uh, sponsorship outreach as well, dealing with sponsors. Okay. Um, and how many hours do you work right now? Uh, I work full time, 
Um, so minimum of like 40. So definitely a nine to five job. Plus if there's any extra stuff, sometimes, you know, move like 45 hours a week. How often is that? Um, every single week. Mm -hmm. It's like a full, full on salary, nine to five, like job. Okay. Um, if you lost your source of income, how long would it be until you like would really be in trouble? Um, I would say at this time, just cause I haven't been, uh, accruing money that long. Uh, cause I just got out of college. Yeah. I would say probably, uh, six months, but I'm still working up emergency fund. Cause I know that's definitely fine. Good financial memes. Okay. Uh, how many months? Sorry. Like six. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, the issue okay so so like uh this is one of those conversations where i need to be really transparent about things um so like like most of the conversations and discussions i have had are good news but uh some of this doesn't have as much good news okay <laughs> but, oh that's that's perfectly fine yeah um so with your current skill set it's extremely hard to break into um esports and gaming um the reason is because this is a very general skill set uh, that a lot of people have or claim to have, right? Um, administrative and operational skills are something that uh, a lot of people can do. And esports right now has a need for, or, or esports and gaming has a need mostly for content creators, influencers, and um, and when I say content creators, I don't mean um, I mean I mean people who know how to create content. So stuff like videos, uh, videography, photography, Editors. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, or uh, player management, right? So um, here is what. So that's the, the, the like. We'll just do the bad news first. Um, so on your current trajectory, um, what, oh yeah, what's your college degree in? Um, it's in information sciences and technology. The best way to describe it is kind of like a mix of IT and business. Okay. What, so that, so the bad news is that I think right now without any, without a kind of contact, um, it would be extremely hard to land a paid position in an esports or gaming company. Um, not impossible. And you could possibly pivot into one of those roles. And I'm going to tell you how to do that later. Um, just taking notes for myself. Sorry. Um, but right now it's difficult. So there's a couple of directions you can go. Um, let's say that you want to stay with your current skill set and improve it. We'll go off that first, right? Uh, for you, I would not recommend um, like ditching everything and going all in on like gaming or esports. I think you already intuitively know that it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Because a six month lifeline is just not realistic to do something like that. Um, yeah. However, what you're probably looking to do over the next one to three years is pivot into a paid position in gaming and esports where you're truly passionate. Right. I think that, yeah, that's a perfect way to describe it. Yeah. So, so this is a situation that's going to require some patience and I can see you've already thought through that. Um, so, so it seems like what you're looking for are more actionable steps for how to actually make that transition. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So I think the first thing is let's assume you want to keep on the path you're on. The best advice I could tell you is to start networking with gaming companies. And I think, where do you live right now? East Coast. Where in the East Coast? Uh, DC. Okay. Um, so you're pretty far away from like LA, San Francisco area, but events like PAX East and it should be really interesting to you, right? And what I would do is I would I would make sure you can schedule some time to attend some of those conventions. And when you're on the floor, do everything you can to get in front of people from Blizzard, people from EA, people from all those companies, and um, use the advice that I had for um, the other gentleman yesterday, which was more along the lines of like, um, you'd wanna be presenting yourself from a learning perspective because your huge advantage here is that you're 23, right? Um, you're just out of college, 
you have time to build these relationships and get to the point where a paid position is possible. Right. Yeah. Um, so the way that I know how to do that, I'm going to give you a couple of ways, but the first one I think is assume, and this is just assuming you want to keep your current skill set. You would say, Hey, like a, a good way to approach someone would be like, and these guys, they just sit, they stand around booths, right? Like they're most of the guys that, um, work for these gaming companies, they don't actually hire separate booth people to be at them. They are the people that are there. Almost, I can't actually think of a company that I know of that hired people to be there. Maybe Nintendo, I think, was the only one that I've ever seen that did it. Uh, and Nintendo's like impossible to get into anyway because it's like a Japanese thing and I have no idea how to get anybody in there. I'm not even convinced that that entire company is not taken over by rogue AI or something. Um, I have no idea. So the way that I would approach this is I would go to conventions, I would hit up like the manager on the floor and I'd be like, hey man, um, I've been involved in some community management, I've done some tournament organizing, like I would really love to like um, look into this as like a project management type thing. Uh, what would it take? Like what kind of information? I'm not like, like I'm looking for a job in this industry, but I'm just looking for information right now. Like you come from it from that position, you don't come it from it from the position that you're like trying to get a job with the guy, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so so that's the first thing. Um, the other way that I know how to get into the gaming industry and the easiest way I know how to get into it is actually c create content around the skill that you have and then use that as a use case. Um, that may be a direction that you like may or may not want to go because it involves learning additional skills. Um, I, is your dream job in in like a gaming company uh project management i mean i i feel like that's the the current kind of path but the big problem i have is like i don't know exactly all the different possibilities out there yeah um, so like there could be you know a ton of jobs out there that i don't know i would find myself really really enjoying okay um Okay, let's talk about another option then. Um, the second option is that you save enough money to actually make the plunge and do an internship with someone like Blizzard. Uh, this is probably the riskiest option, but it might also be the fastest in the end. Um, it really depends. I think it's tied a little bit with conventions and networking because uh, the way that conventions work is you can, you can go and you'll get nothing or you can go and it'll change your life. And usually if you work really hard and you hustle, it'll change your life. That So my my big experience, like a, a big story I have about conventions and the reason why I'm pretty big on them is because um, when I was starting as a streamer in 2012, um, I wasn't partnered. And at the time, partnership getting partnership with Twitch was unreal. It was insane. You needed 400 concurrent viewers to even get a sub button or to get like any kind of ad revenue. So... Oh man. So what I did was, um, I got really lucky. I had a member of my community that was supposed to go to PAX West, but he couldn't go. So he transferred his information over to me and I got a hotel and a ticket, all expenses paid. I just had to pay for the flight. And when I went, I made a business plan and I, and I found this, uh, this dude from Twitch. I just kept asking people at Twitch, like, who's your manager? Who's the guy that you know on the floor? It's like the highest level person. And I eventually got to this guy, the, the head of partnerships, this guy named John Howell. And I handed him a, a laminated business plan. And he's like, did you just, and this is Twitch, right? So he's like, did you just laminate a business plan and hand it to me? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like really serious about this. And he's like, all right, this is a fucking meme, but come with me. And then like he partnered me on the spot, right? And that sort of like changed the whole direction of everything I was doing in the future. Uh, so conventions can be really powerful. Um the second thing I think is like, if you raise enough money, you might be able to do like a year and a year and a half. And you could, um, you could potentially jump into one of these relationships, but I'm pretty convinced that the networking thing feels better than that. Because I think like an internship type of thing, when you're 23 out of college, it just doesn't feel right to me. Um, and you already have skills, you have a background. I think you should be paid for your work. 
um, even if it's a low pay and it's enough to cover your expenses, but you learn? Yeah, I think that makes sense. So if I would take the path of where, you know, trying to go out there and do a lot of networking while I'm in my current position right now, uh, is there any like, um, like things I can also do in the meantime to either sharpen my skills or try to pick up new skills kind of on my own, that would be super applicable. Yeah. Let me give you just some super actionable stuff about what is needed in esports and gaming. Just, just like for you to know, right. I don't know if you'll actually pursue these things, but, um, uh, we can do it. So I'd say in esports, the absolute number one is, um, expert content creators. And this is mostly videographers. So people that can make really good videos. And uh, the second one would absolutely be player management. So this is um, this is uh, in-game coaches and analysts. And then um, this would be um, also like, I, I don't want to say psychiatry, but like player development, by which I mean, um, this is things like chefs. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll use the word psychologists, but this is like a, this is like a kind of meme word because when I say like psychologists, not exactly psychologists, they would be maybe actually I'll use the word sports. Um, what's the word sports psychology? So things that like yeah. what like what Weldon does. So sports psychology is super. Um, and, and then like general performance, this is very much needed. Um, there are more videographers or people that think they can do videography anyway than there are player management. This is extremely rare. After this, you need um, actual like um, operations people. So this would be like COOs. Um, like uh like um executors on the business side marketing is really important and um like advertising and I, and I don't mean social media uh there's like a million people that want to utilize uh that, like the problem with esports is there's a million billion people that think they can be analysts or social media people and things like that and they're all shit at it so when i talk about operations people i can post an ad for these people at CLG or Dignitas or whatever, and I'll get 500 people applying for this at least. But real skills in actual marketing and advertising is is extremely important. And, and, and in a business sense, by the way, um, if I could offer you one useful skill universally that I think would be useful no matter what you do, marketing and advertising would be that thing. Um, and by marketing and advertising, just to, just to lay that out a little bit, I mean... Um, Understanding social media and growth, uh, understanding PPC, which is pay per click, right? Um, so AdWords and uh, mainly AdWords and like um, let's see, uh, like like Bing search and things like that, uh, and then understanding um, things like uh, power words, uh, copywriting. And, uh, and like, and then like sort of like general marketing and things around this, like, uh, copywriting, mm, which is SEO? basically how to write ads. What's that? Would SEO be applicable to this list too? Yeah. Um, we would call that, um, understanding organic growth and search. And then, and I think this is the most important skill set that you can have, um, I can't think of any job where it's not relevant. And uh, I believe in in uh, most most uh, requested jobs in the United States, I think like number one is um, like electrical engineer or something. And then like number two is like is like actual marketing uh, uh, people. So this is like an extremely important job. Um, right now, just because of the, so to give you like a little bit of a background, I, I started in marketing. My first company was a marketing company. Uh, well, my first company was selling eBooks, but, but, um, I used PPC and social media. I didn't use social media. We didn't have it back then. I used PPC and I used, um, like copywriting to make one page websites where I could sell these books. And that took me into making a marketing company. And that skill set has served me throughout my entire career. There was no way I think I would have ever gotten the CEO position at CLG if I had not understood this. And there is no way that I think I would have ever been able to do any of the things that I'm doing, including this stream, if I didn't understand marketing. Um, there's some really good resources for marketing that I can give you. Uh, Dan Kennedy is a great one and all of his books. There's a really good book called, um, let me make sure what it is. Probably one of the best books on marketing I've ever written, um, or I've ever written. Sorry, I'm reading Chad at the same time, so. 
everything. Is this book by a guy named Jay Abram? Uh, getting everything you can out of all you've got is an amazing marketing book. These are people that sort. So these are people that you're not going to get a lot of people that recommend these guys because these guys are like old school copywriters. So the the new marketing meta is way more around social media. Most of the people that give you advice for how to learn marketing these days will start in social media. So learn how to grow your Instagram, learn how to grow your Twitter. I actually think that's less important because most of that is just posting content. You need to understand why people do the things that they do. That's really what marketing is about. And that's like the fascinating aspect of marketing too. Are, are you with me so far? Yeah, I'm following. Okay. Does, does everything make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, why people do what they do is really important to understand, to understand how to sell to them. And I think the number one way that you learn about that is a skill called copywriting, which is like, um, copywriting also will teach you about PPC, but it's really about how to write advertisements and what the difference in words is, right? So like you need to learn things like, um, if I tell you something is virtually indestructible and I'm selling you like something that, um, uh, is going to be like durable, like a hammer. And I say it's virtually indestructible. I'm not actually telling you anything because virtually indestructible means nothing, but the, the word, the word usage, um, implies a certain meaning that would get you to want to do, to, to, to buy this thing. So, um, if I tell you that vitamin D3 has amazing out of this world, virtually like virtually amazing benefits that will, that will almost certainly change your life. Right? Like that sounds really compelling, especially if I up my tonality and I, and I start to speak on it, but it means nothing. And this is how people get away with selling anything like from supplements to nutrition things to everything. Um, products do this all the time. So understanding how this works is really important. There's also, um, couple other really good ones. This is a really classic one, 21 Immutable Law, uh, Laws of Marketing. I think these are books that every single person should read. Uh, this is by Al Reese, I think. Um, there's a newer version of this book and an older one. You want to get the older one. So if nothing else, start spending a lot of time understanding this because this is going to take you wherever you go, this is going to serve you. And, um, this would be like what I would start focusing on. Uh, and, and by the way, like, even if, if you continue your current path as an, like as a project manager, um, this will still increase your skill set by such a vast margin. It's crazy. Okay. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Any thoughts so far, or like kind of concerns with the system or things you're wondering about? Um, no, I was just taking a lot of notes and kind of listening. So um, I definitely think a really good actual item was uh, talking about marketing and advertising. So definitely going to start looking into some of those books and trying to develop those skills. I think that's that does seem like a really, really good idea. Um, do you think it would be a good idea to start looking at um, roles on job sites? And I, I heard this was something to kind of do. I just want to know if it was like a um, if it was actually good, if it was kind of a meme is to go into job roles and look at the skills listed and then try to find and fill those skills before you even like start applying anywhere. So like for an example is the player management. Um, so that sounds kind of interesting. So I would just go around, look at all these player management positions, see what skills are there and then just start taking it from there. Do you think that would be a good idea to start doing? Yeah. Um, so I think a really important part of this, uh, and you nailed this is, from this moment on, if your passion is in gaming and esports, you should be applying for jobs that you want in this field. Um, so regardless of any of the networking things, let's put this down as like option four, um, or actually this is going to be like, do this. <laughs> um, apply for jobs in esports gaming right away and don't stop. And uh, this is going to be controversial advice. And it's and it's anecdotal, and I, I think a lot of uh, a lot of my fellow like you know C level people would be really pissed off if I gave this advice. But here goes because I've always done it in my entire life. I think you should always apply for jobs that are way out of your range. I really do believe this. Um, there was a study done in New York where they set up a fake company, 
and they had 500 employees at this fake company and they posted a job that was for an entry level manager. And then they posted a job that was for a C level executive. Okay. Um, in a major area in New York. So this is like central New York. So, um, the, the, the skill set of the job and the requirements of the job and the description of the job were exactly the same. Uh, and the way that they marketed it were exactly the same as well. The entry level manager position got over 700 applications. The C level executive position got five. Now I can tell you that I can back this up through uh, my personal experience as well, because what happens is that people sort of mentally game themselves into believing that they're not capable of these roles. Now, granted, there there is something to be said that I'm not suggesting a 23 year old person can go out and be a COO, right? Um, yeah. But there are people that have done it. What I am suggesting is, let's say, um, and I also have a theory about this, and this is in self development. I really believe in this, the self development in general, that um, if you set a goal where you're shooting for, let's say, to be 50% better. Let's say that your job is just 50% better overall, okay? If you go for that goal and you get it, you're 50% better. If you get halfway, you're 25% better. Still good, right? But if yeah. you set a goal that's 1,000% higher and you get it, now you're at 1,000%. If you're halfway there, you're at 500%. You see what I mean? So, so mm -hmm. that phrase shoot for the moon, especially when it comes to applying for positions, um, is really good because if you get a job that you can't handle, two things happen. One, you're in trial by fire and you make it and you survive. And now you know some shit and you're in a fucking awesome job Two, you fail and you're young and you've learned a shitload and you gain that experience. Both are very valuable. Um, a huge problem, a, a, a huge thing that people, a huge mistake that people make quite often is I think they underestimate their value. I see this constantly when I'm coaching my clients and entrepreneurs. Holy shit, this is the worst there. So uh, there are so many accountants and so many uh, physical trainers and so many um, uh, people that what they'll, they'll charge like $35 an hour or like $20 an hour. And you talk to them about this and they go, uh, you know, like, I don't think my services are like worth that much. Um, I don't really know, you know, like what this is worth, like whatever. Um, if I charge for consulting, I charge a minimum of $500 an hour. Right. And I know it's worth it. This, this talk that we're having right now is worth that much at least. Right. Because the amount that you could stand to gain as a result of this kind of advice is invaluable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what I would say is don't underestimate and don't undercharge yourself um, uh, for like in any way. You need to shoot way higher than you think you can. Um, and you can also shoot for like entry level stuff too. But I think if you do these two things, number one, you hit like two conventions this year and you talk to people and you, you, you kind of like really prepare for this, like develop your script and make sure that you like come at it from a position of wanting to be informed and wanting to learn. And maybe like your goal would be to sit down with like two or three manager level employees of one of these gaming companies you want to work for and ask them questions about their industry. Like you have me and say like, how do I get into this? Like, like how, like, how do I get interested? Is there anyone you can reference me to that might be looking for a position right now? Um, what did you do? What's your story? Like, right. Make it about them. Make it about adding value to them. You do that. And then from this moment on, you start applying for jobs that are like, let's say like um, maybe even double your, your experience, right? And you really put effort. This is something I also stress is you really put effort into each of those applications. Um, so I've encouraged people to do a video even like for every application, right? Like you spend a lot of time uh, doing, doing that for your, that application. If you can do that, then I, um, I think uh, you'll really be somewhere by the end of 2018. It'll be amazing where you're at. Okay. Yeah. I think those definitely make a lot of sense and I can definitely start acting upon those. And then along the way, um, pick up the marketing and advertising skills with the references that I, that I gave you. Um, I, I think these will be super, super valuable for you. Okay. And so just to reiterate, um, like the three big things you go for is start going to the cons and talking with people, um, sit down with the managers and kind of ask them what they did to get here and not put it in the light of, you know, how like I want a job, but put it in the light of, I'm, I really just want to learn about this, um, to start applying, 
even if it's kind of like out of my range, yeah. um, but definitely put in the effort towards it. And then three, start with uh, all the marketing, copywriting and all that kind of stuff to try to get that skill. Yep. Um, I think that's the most realistic and the references that I gave you are like old school copywriters. Like Dan Kennedy goes with like here, check out, I'll, like I'll just pull up Amazon and you'll laugh at like these kind of books and stuff. Um, they look so cheesy. Um, so check this out. This is like no BS, um, ultimate, the ultimate no holds <laughs> bar. Oh, thank you very much. Who subbed? Hang on one second. Thanks, Kifira. Appreciate it. Like the ultimate direct response, social media marketing, no holds bar guide to producing like measurable monetizable results of social media marketing, right? This guy is like a millionaire a billion times over. Uh, no BS direct marketing is pretty good. Um, all of this guy's books are super, super good. It sounds like super, super uh, um, like cheesy, but like these guys are the the original copywriters and understand how to do it. Oh, damn. I would totally have like skipped right over these books. Yeah. I know. Um, Jay Abrams' book, uh, Everything You Can Out of All You've Got. This one is, I think, probably the one of the best books on marketing that I've ever read. I mean, it's, it's so valuable. It's like from the first 10 pages, you have enough to like understand like marketing forever and the way you think. And, and it's hard to explain why this skill is so good in business. Um, that no, it isn't. Everything about everything about marketing is about attention, a and so everything in the world is about attention. All I care about on my broadcast is how much attention I have, and so um, everything that I do needs to feed into that idea, and everything that businesses need to do to sell product or services feeds into that idea. So if you can help, um, if you can help bring attention to something, this applies to everything. Even like let's say that you're a uh, a background coder right? And you're just programming for some kind of like web app, right? Understanding marketing even then would help you code in a way that makes the app more accessible and then, and yeah. thus increases your value. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So there's literally no place. Like I cannot think of a job in business where this does not serve you. It's, it's an insanely useful skill set. And understanding copywriting is just like, it's like crazy. Like, because like, think about it, it's uses for like resume writing or like, uh, think if you're trying to write a letter to someone and you want to sell them on an idea. Um, think if you want to go to conventions and you want to sell somebody on, like this will teach you all that. Damn, I never even thought about that. It's definitely good info. Awesome. Yeah. This is a crazy skill set. So like, Mar I can tell you like out of anything that I've ever done, like learning marketing has been unbelievably useful. Um, when I was, uh, when I was pretty young, I sold eBooks, like I mentioned before. And the first, uh, I think like $15,000 in revenue that we did on that business, I was doing the, doing it with a guy named Carter Davis. We invested in, uh, like legitimate, like courses, like the, those internet courses that you could never consider taking. Um, like, uh, we would go on and like, you, like, it was like those ones that are like a hundred bucks a month or whatever. We'd buy all that stuff. And there was tons of useful information there. I really believe in like courses and like stuff like Udemy and stuff like that. Uh, if they have like good reviews, um, I definitely believe in paying for education. I still do. I pay for a lot of education, but it's you don't need to right now. Like literally, if you just get started on this, you pay 10 bucks for these Kindle books and like you're, you're, uh, you're, you're on your way. All right. Yeah, I think that's all good stuff. I definitely can start acting upon these. Thanks so much for the info. I really appreciate it. Oh, dude, of course. And um, one thing I would really like is like if you kind of like came back around the stream or you're a sub, so and thank you, by the way, that's awesome. Um, but uh, if you came back around the stream, like over the next couple of months, just keep me posted or just talk in the Discord. Like I really want to know like what happens. Yeah, for sure. I'll start doing these and just kind of post in the Discord um, as things are happening, just to keep you guys updated. But yeah, thanks, Evan. I really appreciate this. Hell yeah, man. I mean, it's my pleasure, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you. All right, dude. Take, take it easy.